cycling nerd another video on my road to three peaks bike race now that we figured out that I'm going how I'm getting there that I'm probably fit enough and once I'm there I also know where to go it was time to think about what to bring because the three peaks bike race is not an easy feat it goes over a number of days probably more than I want but anyways it goes over a number of many days it goes through I don't dare say dangerous but rather treacherous uh, terrain we are up in the high mountains so it pays off to think about what to bring um, and also to plan ahead carefully so that's what I did and I put together my list of stuff that I would bring I know there's a ton of packing list videos out there on the internet here's another one if you're interested feel free to watch and uh, see what I decided to bring and uh, yeah it's gonna be interesting to hear your opinions about it so let's dive right in this is my bike. Um, as you can see, it's uh, A, fully loaded, and B, quite dirty. And that's because I just came back a few days ago from my, well, what you can consider final test ride for the setup and the loading and the packing list. So I decided why not just use this opportunity when I have to unload the bike anyways to just show you what I'm taking. This is it. As you can see, the bags mainly consist of four aspects. A tail fin arrow bag in the back, then there's an epidural top tube bag, or actually a what is it called? A I don't even know what it's called. I think this is called the top tube bag, and this is some other epidural bag. And then I have the cyclide arrow bar bags. Each of those has its own benefits, that's why I picked them, and that's also why I created this Franken bike packing thing with components from different brands, just because every single one of them has something I like about them and uh that's what it's all about. They don't sponsor me anyway, so I don't care. Anyways, um, I put some effort into filling stuff into specific bags according to when or how or if I will need them. So for example, in the aero bag, I'm packing mostly things that I don't really need during the day. So the ultimate goal is I don't have to open this during the day while I'm riding. Not because it would be so much of a hassle. I actually picked the tail fin over some other um, uh, seat post bags because it does open very easily but still it's easy if you if, if there's something you don't just have to faff around with during the day so this is the stuff I don't really need during the day and I can also strap stuff on top like food or I don't know stuff that I need and I also have two quick access bags or two quick access zippers on the sides where I can pull out stuff as I need you will see later this one down here because it's the lowest point uh, lowest loading bag of my setup this has more or less heavier things this one is pretty much empty because I plan to fill stuff that I just want to grab like food or there's a few tools in there you will see so this is very easy to get to um, that's what that is for and then in the front I have all my electronics everything I will need and there's also snacks in there and you can also see none of those bags is really like full to the brim so they all still have a little bit of leeway to fill some more stuff in there or if I grab stuff along the way um, there's still ways for me to put them but now let's get started with actually showing you what's in there so I'm going to start with the tail fin not this part so it's open now but before I'm taking out stuff from the top I wanted to show you something really neat about this thing and that's those two zippers on the side because this is um, even though I don't really well if it is a rainy day from the beginning I will either wear it or put it in one of those two bags but if it's a dry day and I don't really think I will need my wind jacket or my rain jacket I put them here in this bag um, but if I should need them I can always just pull them out super quick um, and get them so this is my windbreaker and on the other side same way we have a rain jacket Let's do it that way. So that's my, my rain jacket. Then what else have we got? This is my off the bike clothes, so just some super light pants, actually zip off pants so I can even make them shorts if I want to. Um, some underwear, t-shirt, 
stuff that I will need if I, I don't know, for example, have to scratch and have to take a train home or something like this, I can wear that. Or if I want to go to a restaurant after, I don't know, make I call it a day easier, earlier, um, some clothes. And also, if it's really cold and I need some stuff to put on, this is also really handy. What else have we got here? Speaking of cold, this is my puff jacket. It's a Patagonia. Really nice, really light, um, and it folds down to practically nothing. So this is for when it gets really cold, either on the bike. It's also, well, not waterproof, but it can, uh, it can deal with water. If it gets wet, it's not that bad. Um, but also, like, if I'm, if I'm sleeping and it's getting really cold, this is the way to dress. What else? This is my, this is my leg warmers, actually. I'm just wondering because there's also other stuff in there. Second uh, chamois, second shirt. So I'm taking one Lycra shirt, which I'm gonna show you in a second, and I'm taking one Merino shirt. Lycra because it's aero. I don't know if that's important for me, but um, also it looks nice and it feels good. Um, but Merino because A, this also sits really, really tight, so it's kind of aero, I guess. But B, Merino is, it keeps you warm when it's cold, it cools you down when it's warm. If you make it wet, it stays like kind of in a moist in a good way for a really long time to cool you down and it doesn't smell so you can wear this for days and days and sweat in it and do stuff it doesn't smell really cool what else uh, another pair of socks um, reflective vest a because it makes sense to be seen just to stay safe and b because it's mandatory in france to ride in those things at night what else have we got um, this is a merino undershirt. I'm also taking two undershirts. One merino, one, um, well, it's kind of, I think, not lycra, but some kind of plastic, um, which is really nice though. It sounds bad, plastic, but it's, it feels really nice. This is a merino shirt. Again, same benefits as the other shirt. It really keeps you warm. It really cools you down and it doesn't smell. What else have we got? Oh yeah, now we're getting to the camping part. So I don't really plan to sleep outdoors too often, but I figured since it gives me some more flexibility in terms of ah, do I really want to stay at this village or is it really feeling good right now and I just want to continue pedaling, bringing some outdoor sleeping gear allows me to do that. It just gives me this peace of mind to say, yeah, whenever I want to stop, I can just stop and sleep in a hedge or in a bus stop somewhere. So, but in order to keep it light, I'm taking my Bivy, Bivy bag. Um, again, this is a really, really light one. Um, because I want to take those things, I don't, well, th there might be a possibility that I will never even use them, but because they're so light, there's no harm in taking them. So part one is a bivy bag, part two is my Thermarest sleeping mat, also super light. Then another part of the puzzle is a sleeping bag, which is not really puffy as you can see, it's a super, super light one, so, and, and super thin one. So. I tried the, the Bibi in kind of coolish, like one digit temperatures without a sleeping bag, just cycling clothes or just um, some, some other clothes and a puffy, puffy jacket on. That pretty much worked for a few hours of sleep. So I don't really think I will need it. But again, we're going to the high mountains, so it can't hurt to bring one, right? What else have we got? Let's see. This is interesting. There's a power bank, which doesn't belong in there. I don't know how it came up there. This one obviously belongs in the front. One of my two power banks. Then we got gloves. Again, we're going to the mountains. Last year, people got snowed in. So bringing gloves sounds like a prudent idea. Same goes for proper hat and a buff, just to keep me warm, uh, yeah, to keep me warm, or also to keep dust out, for example. And then, because I am a sissy, I'm bringing a little cushion, so if I'm sleeping outdoors, I have something soft to rest my head. So I think this is everything that's in the tail fin back. There's also a Garmin Vario light on the back. I'm bringing two of those, um, just so that you can switch and like use one and charge the other one, because I'm also using this during the day, not just as a daylight, but also because it has the little radar thing. So I'm being warned just before I get run over. Really nice. Let's move on to my top tube bag, the first top tube bag. Like I said, this is 
more of an impromptu, ah, where do I put it? Yeah, let's just put it here. But it also has my tools, so things that I need quick access to in case of mechanical, or flat, whatever. So here's my little uh, tool, uh, some cliff bars, a little pump, and some um, tape wrapped around it. So if I need to stick something onto something else, this should be really handy. Um, then we have a little patch kit in case I need to patch a flat or something like that. I also brought a mask. I have another mask, or well, actually two more masks in here in a second. So that's the first compartment, and the second I think is currently just snacks. So there's another clip bar, there's two usually bars. Oh yeah, there's my tire levers. Also pretty handy in case you need to put a flat. And there is some gummy bears also really important. Then up to the next top tube bag, this actually has two sides or two zippers that open to different compartments. The first one is what I call the document vault kind of, because it's this really thin uh, compartment which has, well, currently it doesn't, but it will have like my documents, my passport. Currently it has, what is this? Oh yeah, my health insurance card and stuff like this. Uh, I have another two masks here. This is where I can put my cash and so on. Um, so this is just also really nice and easy to get to uh, in case I need stuff that's in there. And then on the other side it opens. And again, this is also stuff that I think I might need access to during the day because it's super easy, but also because it's so low, um, I try to put the heavy stuff in there. And some of the heavy stuff I'm taking is my toiletry. Um, my toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, chamois cream, number one, you'll see in a second, I've taken two, and all this kind of stuff, so I'll just put this in there, and it's stowed away. Another thing I might need during the day is my lock. Yes, this is not a safe lock, this is just like a gas station lock. It doesn't prevent your bike from being stolen, um, it just prevents somebody from seeing a bike standing there, and nobody looking at it, and just nicking it, and running away with it, or riding. Um, so yeah, obviously you can steal a bike if it's just locked by this. I'm not going to leave it outside in the city, just locked up with this thing. Um, but it gives a little bit of peace of mind, or like on the train or something. It's just nice to have it. Um, it's called the... What is it called? The hip lock. The hip lock, um, it has a three number digits or a three number code. Yeah, uh, just peace of mind to have it when you're in a gas station or like a toilet emergency and you have to go somewhere you cannot see your bike anymore and there's no nice little people there to watch it while you're away that's a good way to, to keep it safe what else have we got those are knee warmers i was looking for them later, earlier so i got full on leg warmers but i also got knee warmers just for different temperature situations maybe that's too much i might have to reconsider that um i also brought arm warmers obviously those are the most important ones i'd say i think i did bring some uh, latex gloves just in case stuff gets dirty um, what else have we got I have a second front light here I do have ooh, interesting what else is here more gloves oh yeah I did bring a number of ziplock uh, zip locks um, just in case I need to zip something to something else those are really helpful so I brought a number of short ones and longer ones and some chain oil what else have we got? Yeah, like I said, more ziplocks. And here. this is also where I have all my repair stuff. So in this little bag, there's a replacement set of cleats because I lost cleats in the past and this would be really annoying to have to run without a cleat. So I'm just taking another set of cleats. And this also has another set of brake pads because Brake pads are kind of consumable objects. They run out, especially if you're cycling in the mountains. So again, it sounds prudent to just take another set. Then I got two inner tubes. What else have we got? Oh, actually I was lying. Those are the brake pads. Uh, I also got a chain link, just in case something happens with the chain, it snaps or I have to I don't know, if my radio radio breaks um, or uh, it gets bent and I have to modify Lando to a single speed, then I obviously have to break the chain for that and bringing a chain link or a quick link for the chain is a good way to make sure that I can, can repair that on the fly. 
I am also, by the way, bringing a replacement um, derailleur hanger, which arrived in the mail yesterday, so it's not on the bike yet. It's over there, I can see. And I think, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's move on to the last bag. And that's my Cyclite Aero Bar bag. So it opens on both sides, but because I put the light here, I can pretty much only open it from one side. But the really nice thing is, and that's also why I picked this one in the end, if I don't open it all the way. But if I open it like this, you can really see it now. Um, it's only open on this side, so I can even access it while I'm riding, which makes this a really nice storage for food, because I can just put it in there and get it out when I need it. But the other big uh, item list that I have in there is my electronics. So for example, my headphones, there is, every guy has that. Big pile of cables, and there's another helmet light that I can put on, charging cables. I am running a Shimano Di2, so that's the only point where I really envy the people riding SRAM because they have those really nice, tiny little replacement battery packs. With the Di2, if you're riding a longer way, you have to take, take a charging cable, which comes with this enormous kind of thing. Luckily, it doesn't weigh much. But still, kind of annoying. Yeah, like all kinds of cables that I will need. What else have we got? There's another bag. Oh yeah, so this is my might need this during the day toiletry pack. It has an emergency roll of toilet paper, some hand wash soap, like not for washing my hands, but for washing clothes by hands. Um, there is the Elon cream, which helps like the ass recover during the night from the stress I put it through during the day and some floss. So things that I don't really need regularly, but if I need them, I know where they are. Oh yeah, now this is my during the day replacement or replenishment toiletries. So this is where I put my second um, uh, set of, of chamois cream, some sun cream, and I don't know why the pocket knife is in there, but I also brought a pocket knife just in case I need to cut something. What else have we got? Oh yeah, this is uh, two portions, I'd say, of the um, carbohydrate drink that I'm bringing. So I'm not really sure yet how many of these I'm going to take, probably 10 of those. So they're packed down kind of nice and small. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll just like gauge it and see how full I'm gonna make this. Obviously then it's gonna empty out over the course of the trip but we'll see how many I'll take. Oh yeah, and then there is two of the, hopefully, like, well, most important items, but hopefully I won't need them. Those are the emergency things. So emergency blanket, not just useful in case of a crash or an emergency, but also in case of sleeping. But like I said, I brought this really kind of thin sleeping bag, but then also obviously an emergency bag, first aid kit. Um, with plasters and, and, and gaze and all those all those things that you always should bring but hopefully will never need. So yeah, this is what I have on my bike, but obviously while I'm riding, I'm also wearing stuff. And like I said, this is why I'm bringing a second uh, pair of chamois, uh, like this kind of, actually love, let me check what the material is. Um, this kind of technical undershirt it's made of polyester. Okay, so this polyester undershirt, which is uh, also really nice at keeping me cool when it's hot. I think when it's getting really cold, I'm probably switching to the merino stuff. But anyways, then I also brought my Lycra riding shirt, obviously some riding socks, my riding shoes, um, and a helmet, obviously, my sunglasses, which are really nice. In the past, I always rode with sunglasses. And when I knew that I would probably also ride into the night or through the night, I brought a pair of clear glasses. Now I got those polychromatic glasses from Oakley, which just change based on the light. So I don't even have to switch them. I can just wear them during the day as sunshades. And at night, like right now, when it's kind of dark, you can see that the glasses are pretty clear. So I can see at night and I don't get any bugs in my eyes, which is really important and also really comfortable. So yeah, this is it. This is my setup, or rather my packing list for the Three Peaks bike race. I think I'm happy with it. Like I said, I just came back from a little test trip where I just, yeah, I used that to figure out if there's anything I forgot or if there might be something that I brought but probably won't need at all or maybe if I should switch things. I tested quite a bit, so I think I'm really happy with it now. So 99%, this is, this is what I'm taking. 
Obviously, if you're watching this video, you're kind of a packing list nerd. So if you're really interested in what exactly I'm taking, I'm putting a list down in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to shout a question or just ask me. Make sure to follow me on YouTube, on Instagram. And uh, yeah, let's see in a week or so almost uh, how all this holds up and uh, if it helps me survive the Three Peaks bike race. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.